Welcome back to the channel. Inflation figures are out and they are worse than expected. And that has now crashed the traditional indices, the stock markets, the S&P, the NASDAQ and the Dow Jones. And of course, crypto has also taken a hit, in particular, Ethereum. Ethereum has broken current support. So let's look at those in today's video. Look at where we are going from here. What the hell is going on and what can we can expect over the coming days? We know what we're looking out for this year as 2022 is looking like a prime opportunity if you missed out on 2020 to be getting into the market. But of course, that is with some disclaimers. You definitely need your plan and understand the possibility of the downside risks that are present in the markets right now, even though the rewards are looking pretty juicy over the coming years. So we're looking at two different markets, our investor market and our traders market. So stick around for that on today's video. Make sure you've smashed the like button, get it up to a new all time high. Let's get over 10% of the viewers hitting that like button right now and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. A huge hello to all of the new subscribers that have come over from Invest Answers video. I went live today with James on Invest Answers. So thanks very much for joining us on another video. All right, guys, let's crack on with what's going on today. Of course, we've just seen a lot of the markets drop 2.7%. And yes, we're seeing a lot of fearfulness across the markets. People don't know what's going on. Everyone's scared about their portfolios with good reason. The market did just drop and people are uh, freaking out about this 8.6% inflation rate. Now, just a quick look at home in Australia here, 5%. You can see this is the same thing that's going on around the world. New Zealand, 6.9. Eurozone, 7.4. Canada, 6.8. 6 in Italy. Russia, of course, is getting absolutely smashed. Singapore, 5.4. UK at 9. We can go on and on. It's, it's happening all around the world. And in the US, 8.6 is just slightly higher than March's figures and everyone is freaking out about this. So this is what is happening to the markets. I guess they weren't expecting it to be slightly higher, but of course now that's happened. Yes, that's what we see with the market. It uh, dropped the Dow Jones 2.7%. As for the S&P, we're at 3,900 right on the dot there and it dropped almost 3% from yesterday's close to today's close. And of course, the other big one is the NASDAQ also dropped 3.5%. You can see here 3.6 right there, but it's come back down to our support zones. So in terms of the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ is the tech sector. And if you've been a viewer of the channel for several months now, you know we've been looking at a top in the market. Uh, just after that point, we had November, we saw the breakdown that was in December, and we have been talking about a very difficult, volatile year for cryptocurrencies, for Bitcoin, for the stock market, even for real estate as a slowdown. But when these things occur, when we get a slowdown, they are good opportunities to be getting into the market. That's what the smart money is doing. The smart money isn't freaking out about a few percent drops. They want the markets to be down 20, 30 percent in order to get into the market at a cheaper price because they're looking at the bigger picture. They have bigger sums of money to be moving around. So they have to be buying when the market is dropping. Now, in terms of a low, yes, I've talked about that heaps of times. In terms of the cycle theory that we're looking at, it's possibly coming in the next one to six or so months. You know, it's quarter three, maybe out to quarter four of 2022. And so far, that has been playing out very, very well. We thought maybe it might come in a little bit earlier, but at the moment, there's no confirmation of the market turning around yet. So we can still stay to the, the downside because the trend is to the downside. But it hasn't breached any of our significant areas here yet. This is the NASDAQ. It's come back to sit on some previous old highs back in August of 2020. Uh, and even if we drop down that little bit lower into the yellow zone, I don't see that as too much of an issue. This is for the NASDAQ or the tech sector because, of course, crypto and Bitcoin have been relatively correlated to the NASDAQ. Now, not necessarily doesn't mean it have to be in the percentage points, but just in terms of the movement of the market. Now, people wonder why is that the case? Well, we're looking at risk on and risk off. St uh, tech stocks, growth stocks, they are for when people want to feel risky. They jump into the market and they want to get exposure to more risk because there is more upside potential, which is the same deal for cryptocurrencies. And so that's why they're still relatively correlated. Now, in terms of the danger level here, that's my 50% level. This is the 50% level for the low in the uh, GFC low for the NASDAQ. Now, that 50% level comes out at about 9,000 points. So we're a long way off that for the NASDAQ. 
And if we just get rid of that, we can see the 50% from this current range. This is the COVID crash to the current all-time high. We're sitting on that zone now. So even if we drop below that, we still have the $9,000 level that we could see act as support and not be too phased with what's going in the, on in the market in the broader sense, in the longer term investment, it would just give us a better buying opportunity for tech. But of course, you'd have to be patient and wait for that point. And like I said earlier, I'm still seeing this as possibly a low coming in, in the next one to six or so months. It is a broader picture because we're painting here with a bigger brush. The brush here is from 2008 to the top in 2021. That's a 13 year gap. So of course we have to give some lenience here in terms of the months. So with that in mind, what's going on in the, the markets, of course, we got the inflation fears, new all time highs hitting 40 year records, yada, yada, yada. That stuff is really out there for big headlines and for say new investors, something for them to hold on to. You're not a new investor anymore. You've been here, you've been watching the channel, you understand what is going on. Uh, and I see your comments as well. You guys are doing fantastically well as you're seeing through all of these ridiculous headlines. The headlines come out and it's part of a bull market. We know this because bull markets climb walls of worry. Markets going up, there's worry all the way up the top of that market. Every time we had Evergrande, if you remember just a couple of years ago, we had it again last year as well. We had the Russia invasion early this year. Of course, we're still beneath that, but we're climbing from that point. You go back years, there was fears of different sorts of flus. We had Ebola's. We had all the sort of stuff from 10 years ago and the markets are still going up. So bull markets climb walls of worry and inflation fears at the moment are just part of the wall of worry into the peak that we're looking for sometime around 2026. And of course, we'll have to see whether that extends on, but we'll just continue to go with the macro trend in that sense. So we've seen these inflation figures. As for ETH it, in cryptocurrency, this has affected ETH the most out of any of the major cryptos at this point in time. And what I'm judging that from is a breakdown of major support levels. You can see here for Ethereum, we had a major support here at 1700. And just in the last few hours, ETH broke that 1700 and closed beneath it. So targets to the downside now, now that we've broken that 1700, I wanna see the week close below it as well as a more macro confirmation of the breakdown of support. So the week will be closed Let's get our weekly chart up. You'll see the weekly chart will be closed in about two days time. So we'll keep a look out for that as well to see if ETH will close below the 1700. To the downside, 1400 previous old all time high percentage drop from the current price to 1400 is about 16, 15%. And then if we continue to go lower, just to have a picture, an idea within our plans to know the maximums of the downside, it's not to say that we need to we have to go there or we need to throw FUD into the market. None of that sort of stuff. That is beginner retail mindset. You are not one of those people. That's what beginners always think. They think people are throwing FUD out there and they they freak out about their portfolios going down. But if you've been in the markets and you've got your own plans, you know that you prepare for what is the possibility of the downside. That's just how you invest. That's what happens as an investor. So if I'm just looking a little further down, just to some other support levels, you can see we had a top here uh, at about $800 in May of 2018 before the market tanked from that point. So this is for ETH. And I'll tell you why we're looking at ETH in particular, especially for trading in just a moment. Uh, to that downside, we're looking at about a 50% drop from where we currently are. So 1600 bucks down to about 800. Of course, it's about a 50% drop or so. And that would then bring us into the zone before the markets all took off. And you'll know that this is a key area that I'm watching for in case the market gets to there. These sort of uh, November to December of 2020, that particular zone, that was where the market sentiment really started to kick off. So if we happen to get to that point, that would mean for me, at least an equilibrium in the market sentiment. That was a the area of the market before it absolutely shot off. Maybe we come down to that point again to retest that emotion of the energy, uh, the energy of the market from that point and see if we can form a base there and then move to the next, the next bull market, next higher prices. And that would still leave us at a much higher low than what we saw during the COVID crash and then the, uh, the bear market crash of late 2018, early 2019. So that particular zone is somewhere around 60 to 70% from the current prices. Now, I'm looking at this because of the breakdown for ETH and then generally what flows over is uh, altcoins start to break down as well. So this is really becoming more of a trader's market now that we're finally getting some sort of momentum 
to the downside and we're getting some breaks of support provided we get the confirmation in the week closes. And that brings me up to the video sponsor, which is Bybit. And this is part of the World Series of Trading that they have come up once a year. So this is the second year that they've been running with this event. There's a huge prize pool, 8 million USDT. So if you guys wanna get involved, I'll leave links to this in the video description. Of course, trading isn't for everyone. And this is gonna be more for the more experienced traders out there because it will involve leverage. So. Keep that in mind. I'm not telling everyone to go out there and trade. However, if you are interested, it is a good thing that the markets have at least taken a bit of a drop because for traders, they want volatility. So if you are a trader, you want to see the markets get volatile rather than the markets trend sideways. So in terms of this event here, go and join us uh, in our squad. Our squad is Crypto Hobos. So go and check that out in the video description and get involved in the trading. The more traders there are, the higher the prize pools, of course. Uh, current prize pool sitting at 500, but there's only 8,000 participants. So we can get up to 80,000 here and the prize pools get up to that $8 million. So check out the links, video description, Join Bybit if you haven't already. There is also spot trading and staking over on Bybit. And then if you want to join the squad, I'll also leave a link down there once you have signed up uh, to Bybit to open your account over there. The event runs between June 10th and July 17th. So make sure you sign up early on and you'll get extra bonuses by using the links down below in this video description. All right, let's carry on with the trading of cryptocurrency because of the drops in these current, well, in Ethereum anyway. And so looking to those downsides, let's move across to total three. So this is the total cryptocurrency market caps, excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum. And so I'm bringing all these into play because of the possibilities of trading and further downside. I know if you're a long-term holder of altcoins, this isn't going to feel the greatest, but the market trend is down and we just have to accept that. There's nothing we can do in order to change it, no matter how much fundamental analysis we do, how much we think the prices shouldn't go down any further. While the trend is down, you have to go with the trend. You can't reverse the trend just by hoping and believing. That's where I get the hopium free aspect of the channel from. While the trend is down, the trend is down. Trade with the trend, or if you're a longer term investor, remember we're splitting them here, traders versus investors. If you're a longer term investor, then you just wait until the trend has changed and you will for confirmation, pay a premium. What I mean by that is if we see the markets trend down towards some of our support zones, maybe they come towards 300 billion. This is for the total market caps, excluding Bitcoin and ETH. So all your cryptos plus stable coins. And you start to see the market reverse and come back up, give you some higher lows. Uh, over the course of the, the time of the market, that is, the time it's taking to do that, then you can look to enter longer term positions for altcoins once you've seen that market bottom and reverse, but you pay the premium. You don't buy in at that exact low, but you wait until the market moves in your, in your direction, in your favor, and you start to get the momentum in the profits from that point. Now, I know people can't stomach that and they prefer just to keep buying all of the dips, but I just stress to you again, the dips have been many and very far away to the upside. So I know a lot of people love to buy all the dips on the way down for their altcoins, but in terms of an average price, it's probably going to be pretty terrible at this point in time, unfortunately. Now, this is just how I trade and it's worked very, very well in the past because I want to trade with momentum. And if the momentum is to the upside, great, I'm going to go long and take some profits that way. But if the momentum is to the downside, and I'm looking for a longer term investment, then I'm going to wait until we see a bottom and the market reverse and come back up. While the market is dropping, that's a trader's market. That's where uh, traders can look to go short. And the total market cap is looking prime for that. Getting there, I think once it breaks this level here at about 400 billion, you're going to see a lot more cryptos really start to tumble and lose a lot of their value. And I would then look to the total market cap three to around this 300, 320 billion to see whether those altcoins will bottom out and potentially be good trading opportunities to the long side. So if this doesn't happen and we're wrong, we don't get that breakdown from 400 billion, then sure, we should get a bounce very soon because we're getting close 
to that level yet again. So that's where I'd be wrong looking for this market to bounce up, give us some sort of recovery bounce. But I still think there is that time for the market to continue to uh, fall over the longer period of time in the short term. Uh, it's either going to bounce from this point and give us some longer trades or it's going to break down because it's very close to that 400 billion and then tumble that little bit further to uh, about 300 billion. And in terms of a percentage from the current price, we're looking at about a 20 to 25% drop to that next support zone, which I class here at about 320 billion. As for Bitcoin, it's holding up much better than cryptos and Ethereum, and we know that as well because of the Bitcoin dominance, which is still in a relatively uh, good uptrend, even though we're just starting to put in what potentially could be a lower top, and a lower top is a uh, bearish sign, but it's very early days, very, very early days for that to come in just yet. We just have to wait to see whether we get the confirmation in the market break beneath 47% dominance uh, on this chart here. But as for Bitcoin, it is holding up. It's still holding the $28,000 level. So that might mean that at least Bitcoin's strong for now. And you can see those uh, the numbers tumble in other cryptocurrencies, the likes of all your other altcoins, which aren't able to hold their support of May and then their support of the 12th of May as well. Bitcoin trading at the moment is still quite tough because it's in this trading range. There are only going to be smaller, shorter term opportunities and closer price targets. You can see from the low to the top here at about 31K, you've only got about an 8% uh, profit margin to work with just depending on the leverage that people are using. And I'm just talking about in terms of trades. This is not for everyone and I understand that it's just going to be more for the experienced traders who have plans and use stops. Definitely use stops because the market may not get up there and then reverse down and come back and test some of these lower prices. And so the, the low now at 28,000 uh, is only about 4% away as well. So that's a nice closer stop at least if the market is to bounce from here. This is for Bitcoin, of course. At least you've got your stops closer, uh, about 4% away from the market and you might have an upside of about 8%. So a two to one is much nicer than trying to trade long at at the uh, resistance levels where you don't have that much more room to the upside. And as for the investing, like you see I do with my retirement fund portfolio, which I post about and also mentioned to our members as well in the Investor Accelerator, learning how to trade and invest longer term. With that portfolio, just chipping away at it, Bitcoin and ETH only, only, not into altcoins just yet. And I'm still looking for that further downside uh, time target later this year, sort of one to six months from now. And then I think we'll get the churn, the, the grind, the boring times, and then we start to move up. And those boring times are fantastic for entering into more positions. Uh, but of course, I still see that we have a little bit of time to go with the Bitcoin chart. That's it for today's video. Thanks again. Check out the links in the video description if you want to get involved in the World Series of Trading with Bybit. Use those links. You can score yourself bigger bonuses all the way up to $4,100 of sign up bonuses. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you guys at the next video. Thanks again. Have a great weekend. Until then, have more fun to get more done.